गुगल डेभलपर एक्सपार्ट इन मैशन लार्निंग लुकिंग भविष्य सामग्रिक अग्रजात्र बटन and open the google collab okay so once you open the google collab you may might experience this type of this setup okay one pop up will arrive in the below of the pop up you can see there is an one option is given new notebook okay so please click on that and open the notebook so you can see this type of notebook is coming up in front of you okay here you can for example there you can see that with dot ipy nb uh, nb extension one uh, area is there untitled one here you can give some name for example you may give the name like qcnn practice okay so it will it will it will uh, it will be stored in your google drive okay so if you write like qcnn practice and then For example, you see once you come in, in uh, come into the uh, code writing section here, you see there are two options are given, plus code and plus text. So plus text, if you want to write some text, click there, okay, and then you can write some text there and plus code section write some codes, okay. Now you see I am going back to my earlier notebook, okay. So here you see there are some theoretical details along with the coding portion. Everything is mentioned there in the notebook. So I will share the notebook with Haru. He will share with all of, all the participants if required. So make sure that all of you are uh, you are reproducing the codes which I am presenting here. Okay, in your notebook. That is for your practice purpose. Then what will happen? Then uh, all the theoretical essence. I will make a brief over brief overview on that. Once you uh, go through them, okay, uh, while they're receiving the notebook, the idea will be much more clear to all of you. Will become much more clear to all of you. Okay. Now, one thing, one uh, we need to understand few few uh, things. For example, which I want to highlight here, that nowadays, for example, uh, uh, like my friend was mentioning, that Quantum Dot is the first AI platform in Bangladesh. and you see not only in bangladesh and across the globe there are a lot of discussions are going on on ai and you see the influences of ai in in overall every domain it's not only about the science or technology now it is in management domain also because management also has become the data driven as data driven field where people are 
are looking for the quantitative study because the main reason is that we are storing data digitally we are applying certain algorithms on it and then we are interpreting it now what is the need of this quantum ai quantum machine learning quantum deep learning what is the requirement of that by the way we all know that, that there is so much efficacy we are getting in terms of the classical ai so we need to understand that prothom amader eta bujhte hobe je why should you require that so basically you see that once the computational era started people started to record the data in a, in, a, in, a, in a relational database mode from from late 60s okay then in official use purpose all the developed and developing countries gradually people had start people started using quantum uh, sorry using um, computers in their offices okay where we basically write something you store data uh you really started to data digitally but what happened then then there was no concept like the unstructured data that is that was mainly basis on the basis of the structured data but what happened that then in 1994 once we started with the exploring with internets okay and then onwards the rise of the especially in 2004 we have seen the rise of facebook unprecedented way and we also started to explore google in large extent so what happened that with the social media network sites for example facebook linkedin whenever you are posting something posting some images some videos those are stored in unstructured way okay but your login activity login time your your active time sign out time everything will be stored in the structured format tabular format but your whatever the post you are doing images you are sharing images videos you are writing something this is the unstructured part so in a holistic way we see that there is a rise of the semi structured data but we all know that as the rise of the data volume because every day the digital data is getting double okay the now nowadays is the number of the stars in the universe is equal to the number of the bits in the digital world so there is a vast increment of the digital world and due to that nowadays we are talking about if we have the data in order of 10 to the power 5 nearby 10 to the power 5 we can go for deep learning so in 2012 after the success of the alexnet okay people started to explore deep learning in a large extent nowadays we have the uh, frameworks like pytorch and stuff so all of the pythonic okay and we have, we have seen there are there are supportive hardware development as well nvidia came up with gpu google came up with tpu in 2012 and 2016 respectively so it has made the adequate support while processing of the uh, of the data sets whether we have the data in large data aspects as well because now it is also have the hard to process the big data as well but what about the quantum domain why we require the quantum architectures in terms of the to support machine learning quanta deep learning stuffs now you see as i was mentioning that there is an exponential growth in the database so what will happen by 2035 as per as per the experts whatever the physical processes we have nowadays that will be saturated and due to that we require to go for the quantum paradigm because of the support we have classically that will be submitted and that is the reason we require to start take 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 come account i mean we require to think uh, i mean quantum very very seriously and that's the reason we have to develop that all developing countries will have to budget for the quantum even in this yes so we all think about quantum paradigm so so we have seen there are certain uh, initial level of development in of the quantum uh, quantum uh, counter part of principal component we also have seen the quantum counter the machine nowadays um, talking about the quantum deep learning to tackle with the large data sets so what about talking about the quantum convolution network which is the counterpart of the classical cnn okay so <clears throat> today in today's topic we will try to cover up some hands on experiences on quantum convolutional neural network qcnn okay so what will happen that if you don't have to worry about it whatever the relevant papers technical papers if you want to go through some theoretical details and all those things you will be able to see if you click on the hyperlink present in the in the in my notebook you will be able to see all the relevant papers are there so you don't have to worry about the supporting stuff you have to go through but as the 
mission is all about one hour so we will more, mostly relying on the reproducing the results okay all the theoretical stuffs are already present there in this in this uh, uh, notebook i have also mentioned few tricky coding uh, aspects which why we have chosen certain uh, uh, arguments or certain patterns why we have defined that everything uh, in a given there in a, in, a, in a gist mode if you require some more help you can later on contact me my details are with Haru. so without any further delay and with, with this introduction let us start discussing about the quantum convolutional neural network now as i was mentioning that that the data set here we'll use it's all about the cluster set now cluster state what does it imply by cluster state cluster state is basically highly entanglement state okay so our target with this qcnn will be to check that whether we are able to detect that this particular cluster state is excited or not if it is excited the output will be plus one if it is not excited the output will be minus one so in this way we will we will uh, we will evaluate this now the in, in generally the paper which was first discussed about the quantum convolutional neural network it was published in 2019 in nature physics so, so they basically uh, talked about the the spt phase classification now what is spt spt means symmetric protective topology okay which is a kind of order zero temperature in quantum mechanical state who, by maintaining a symmetry and a finite energy gap okay so this is the part of physics but our target will be to deal with the very less complicated data we will we will maintain the similar type of data but little bit of lesser complicated data such that you can get the output in a in a very short okay and 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 you can experience the beauty of the quantum convolutional neural network now first of all what you have to do you have to just uh, uh, type uh, this particular line of code pip install tensorflow equals to 2.4.1 once you, uh, you go to your 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 coding uh, coding coding window of the of the collab and you just start write write uh, dot pip install tensorflow equals to 2.4.1 and then you see there is a there is one button is there run cell button just click on it you will be able to see that you are you are gradually downloading this particular part peep install oh, tensorflow 2.4.1 okay so once you are being able to able to do it for example if i if i click on it so you guys can experience on you i am requesting all of you to reproduce it with me okay so like you see i i am i'm just doing i'm repeating the same thing just to just to help you guys that you can also reproduce in your in your in your collab section okay So, so let let me uh, just a second. Just let me let me do it in the window which I have created. Okay, here it will be better for you to check and reproduce. Okay, so what I am doing, I am just simply uh, uh, writing pip install tensor uh, tensorflow two point four point one, and you will be able to see that it will it will start the gradual installation of the tensor. Okay. So then what I so once this particular installation is completed, I will do for the TensorFlow Quantum. So Google came up in 2019 with the, to support all the necessary stuff to incorporate in one mode. They are, they are basically of that. That is TensorFlow Quantum. Okay. So it will it will give you the all the necessary support related, related to the quantum uh, uh, quantum AI related stuffs, okay, or quantum ML related stuffs. So once it is done, so I will I will move to gradually the the download of installation of quantum TensorFlow. So the process is same. Once if you are done with your installation, of the it is already is completed. Then you can go to pip install TensorFlow Quantum. Okay, here is the installation is going on. Okay. So I will then once it is completed, then only I will I will take this part pip install TensorFlow Quantum, okay, by installing the TensorFlow Quantum. So here you see the download is going on there, okay.
so you can see the download is going on once the process is completed we will go for installing the tensorflow tab. okay so i am requesting all of you to see the screen and try to reproduce it in your in your google colab You can also uh, write down in your chat box window if you require any help while if you find any error or if you have any difficulty, you can write it in your chat box as well. So this is how the installation is done. Okay. Now in the next step, what I will do, I will just now install the TensorFlow Quantum. Okay. So what I am doing, I am installing now TensorFlow Quantum. The TensorFlow plant is done. We have in installed TensorFlow 2.4.6, sorry, 2.4.1. And now we are going to install uh, TensorFlow Quantum. So that is how we are doing gradually, okay? So once we are done with the TensorFlow uh, Quantum, uh, TensorFlow and TensorFlow Quantum, now few things we will explore. First of all, our target will be to import the TensorFlow and other necessary modules from the TensorFlow and other things. So for example, if you see in the screen, we are importing TensorFlow as TF, then TensorFlow underscore quantum as TFQ, and then importing other important modules, for example, Silk, SymPy for the symbolic Python computation purpose, NumPy, we all know, import NumPy as NP for the the ten, all, all the tensor related operations we use it and the other visualization tools like matplotlib and from matplotlib we are using we are we are using one alias plt matplot dot pi pi plot as plt plt is the alias for the pi plot and then from silk dot country is svg we are basically importing svg circuit to give you the schematic of the quantum circuits so these are the things we are basically taking up now, few notes I have highlighted here because most of those you guys who are basically using Python on a daily basis or Pythonic platform on a daily basis, all of you know all those things. But for example, Silk, that, that may be new to you, I have highlighted that it is a framework for the quantum algorithm for noisy intermediate scale quantum devices. Okay, so we in short form, we call them as the NISQ devices, noisy intermediate scale quantum devices which is a near quantum device it was developed by the google ai quantum team and then also the matplotlib inline sets why we are using that because you see we all know that matplotlib is a very good support uh, provides support in terms of the graphical plots in python now this matplotlib inline says the back end of the matplotlib where inline plays a pivotal role in back end now the output of plotting commands can be displayed in line fontains like the Jupyter Notebook setup. Okay, So that's the reason we have kept it there. The resulting plot will be stored in the notebook document. Okay, And while incorporating in, in further steps, while doing the QCN, and one important argument will be there, that will be Bharvas. Okay, What is the reason of using Bharvas? Now you see, for example, if you see the Bharvas equals to 0, it will show nothing, but if you give it one, so your output, it will gradually print your output related to quantum convolutional neural network while training process. So that, that argument will use during the training, but I have explained, highlighted the explanation here. Okay. So if, if you, if you find any, any difficulty related to any other arguments or any module, you may ask, feel free to ask me, but these are three things I found that you may find some difficulty. I have highlighted it here. Okay, I have tried to provide much more details as much as I can in this notebook, along with the research papers, which are important and which has the important contribution in terms of the quantum convolutional neural network development and along with the other physical sciences aspect developments. Okay, so I believe the uh, it, it, it has done already. So installation is already done. Now we will go to the next part of the uh, now the, we will do the necessary module, whatever the importing TensorFlow modules and other module dependencies. So you will, will cover up that part. Okay. So what I, we are doing now, we are basically importing TensorFlow STF. Please uh, try to follow the instruction from the screen. So what we are doing now, we are basically importing TensorFlow STF. 
tensorflow underscore quantum as tfq and then importing circ okay which is which provides the comp quantum computational support in near quantum devices like in i school devices and any any other quantum simulators so that simulators can be in the mode of software packages okay uh, for example project q okay or or it can be uh, <clears throat> uh frameworks or cloud cloud based frameworks like ibm q ibm quantum experiences okay now import simpy for the symbolic computation purpose uh, import numpy as np then what will you do visualization tool import live in line for the inline visual presentations on the jupyter notebook type setup like we are using ipynb okay or for example importing the matplotlib.pyplot as pld pld is the alias stands for pyplot and then from strict contrib.svg importing svg circuit which is the which is the schematic representation of the quantum circuits so those representations has been done now what we will do so basically now our task will be to build a qcnn quantum convolutional neural network so ensemble sub circuits in quantum uh, tensorflow graph if you see for example what are the type what are the things are required to to build the architecture some theoretical lessons i have given there but remember that like we always say those who are interested in the data science domain i always advise to go through them the linear basics of the linear algebra for example matrix okay vector matrix and then basic aspects of the probability okay and followed by their basic uh, uh, basic idea on python because all those machine learning and deep learning frameworks are the pythonic now along with that if you are jumping into the quantum domain now along with those concepts you would basically you require to know the very basic idea of the quantum computation okay what are the quantum gates what are the pauli gates okay for example pauli xyz matrices okay. so those idea i believe all of you have that because you are attending quantum sessions so i believe all of you have those idea okay and if you are new to this field i would request to go through a very basic quantum computational books such that you can gain some basics on it and then you can then you can come into this particular field because once you are going to anything development of the quantum ai related domain whether it is quantum machine learning quantum deep learning you first have to know the classical part classical machine learning classical deep learning then along with that you require the basic knowledge of quantum computation okay and then it will be easier for you to explore in this domain otherwise you might you may find that you are lost so uh, due to that i have already highlighted few theoretical essences those parts which we use for quantum circuit development purpose because the more the quantum circuits will be get the more will be you the more it will be easier for you to incorporate the coding part okay so for example what we are doing in terms of the tfq provides the layer classes designed in, in graphical circuit constructions now q dot layer set circuit layer what is it will uh, gradually adding up the details of layers okay the architecture layers okay now if you see for example the rx gates rotational rotational operators we have rx ry rj these three rot rotational operators we have those who are familiar with the basics quantum uh, computations we all know in the block sphere we basically talks about the three rotation operators rx ry rj now in our case we are exploring rx and ry so that's the reason i have mentioned them rx and ry so rx gate is one of the rotational operator okay which gives you the single qubit rotation through x axis okay now the angle we are considering theta and radian ry what does it give you ry ry gate basically gives you the it is another rotation operator which is giving you the single qubit rotation through angle theta around the y axis if, uh, if we have used rj then i would have mentioned that rj is a, in a similar fashion rj is an app of our rotational operator what you see the single qubit rotation through angle theta around z axis so rx ry rj these are the rotational operator okay can be represented through the block sphere now along with that we will talk about the pauli gates so we all know those who are very much familiar with the linear algebra okay so basically uh, you, you might have explored the pauli matrices and these are the very basics in the first chapter of any quantum computation book you will come across about those gates 
So I'm just giving you some idea because whatever the quantum gates we use, it is very much um, uh, quite uh, familiar. People should be familiar with the Pauli XYZ matrices along with the those those gates XYZ gates, rotational uh, operators RX RY RZ, and obviously the Hadamard gates. Okay. Now, for example, X X gate is represented using how we can do that. So if you see. <coughs> Where zero one 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 zero eight, okay, present it. Now, for example, if you see the state, if we apply over the zero states, now if you are applying x state, it is basically switching it to the one state. If you see this particular operation, okay, matrix vector multiplication, you see we are as an outcome we are getting the one, okay. So, so we are basically converting the zero state to one state using the x gate so basically what does it imply it's a rotation of the pi radian through x axis right in the block sphere that means x gate gate is acting like a not gate okay if we consider among the classical analogy so x gate is acting upon the not gate in terms of the classical analogy now for example y and z gate if we talk about that just a brief overview that so these are the uh, basic structure of the uh, y, y and z Pauli matrices y and z gates are Built up on the Y and Z Pauli matrices, and these are their basic structure. So they are also just for your knowledge purpose. I am just highlighting. They also follow the perform the rotation by pi around the Y and Z axis respectively in the block sphere. So I am not going much detail or theoretical detail because that is the domain of the quantum computation. Once you are attending session of the quantum machine learning or quantum deep learning, we always expect that you know the basics of this quantum computations okay i still for your understanding purpose i am just giving you a few glimpses of that uh, because you see so much things we have to cover and the time is is limited uh, then uh, for example hadamard gate i believe that in the hadamard gate each gate is another fundamental quantum gate okay and it allows us to move away from the poles of the block sphere okay that means in the poles of the block sphere what are there x y z these three things are there now once you want to explore the i mean the superposition benefit of the zero and one because what happens that in classically we have two bits zero one but in quantum apart from zero one we can create other intermediate bit uh, other intermediate states by using the superposition property now superposition and tell me that's the reason i mean uh, nowadays you see that quantum uh, paradigm if you are utilizing the quantum computers you can solve any complicated problem within few seconds where any classical computer may take several years and even nowadays uh, 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 google's quantum supremacy paper, paper claim that one quantum computer uh, uh, i mean i mean is equivalent to the 5 million laptops classical laptops so you can you can see that the power that the one quantum uh, from the quantum domain you can you can achieve that is that is the reason nowadays a lot of investments are being made in the quantum domain so hadamard gate is a quite frequently used gate in the quantum domain and and if you see that it is basically will give you the one by square root two is given there to normalize it so the basic elements it is also two two cross two hadamard uh, matrix is there so basically one one in the first row and the second row it is one minus one is that the elements are there and and in the block sphere if you see the rotate it will rotate around one zero one that means from x between x and z axis it will keep on, on rotating okay so uh, one thing people often ask that whether this quantum gates are reversible or not that also i have highlighted unlike the most of the classical gates quantum gates logic gates are very much reversible okay so this is the basically uh, basic architecture. If you know those, those those gates, you can it will be easier for understanding it. That while adding the circuit layer, what we can do, we can either do the append or prepend operation. Okay, so these are the R X R Y rotational rota rotational uh, operators are there. Okay, once if you are using the Hadamard gates to append it, so this type of structure you will get in the right hand. What you can observe, or if you are doing the prepend. Then what will happen? This Hadamard gate will go before these rotational operators. Okay, if you do a doing append, it will go after the rotational operators. If you are going doing it in prepend, then it will come here. 
so this is how in quantum domain you can keep on adding different circuit layers so nothing to worry about it i will share this this notebook to harun or the organizers they will they will distribute among the participants so uh, uh, everything will be there so nothing to worry about it to understand this i repeat this this type of the circuit architecture all of you please should have the very strong grip on the quantum computation so if you if you know that's fine if you do not know kindly brush up your skills try to understand what are x gate y gate z gate what are the rotational of rx rx rz mm -hmm. then the hadamard hadamard gate so you will be able to see what uh, what type of the operations we are doing now let's let's jump into this this part okay so what we will do in this section we will basically define some circuit then what will what will be our case first of all defining some quantum circuit we will then convert it to a tensor then what will you do in this section define a circuit we want to append like for the append uh, we have seen that how we are appending it we will follow that particular step then we will instantiate our layer and then we will just simply save the output okay so in the first step you see we are we are initializing it the grid qubit 00, zero. then one and storing it in qubit then we are defining some circuit circuit one and circuit two you see we have defined some circuit okay then we are converting it into a tensor which is we are basically storing it in under the input underscore circuit underscore tensor okay then what we are doing we are basically defining the circuit we want to append okay so that is basically what storing the result under the y underscore circuit okay and then what we are doing we are appending the layer so how we are appending it using y underscore appender where we are using the function for example tfq dot layers dot add circuit so this through this particular function we are basically appending it and then what we are doing we are basically seeing i mean we are run we can run our circuit tensor through that layer and saving the output that is y underscore appender where two arguments we are taking input underscore circuit underscore tensor comma append equals to y underscore circuit and then we are storing it output circuit tensor so let me let me run this particular portion of the code in the practice collapse okay so what i am doing i am just clicking on the code section and simply uh, putting it there and running it okay so if there is no error it will run successfully okay now what will you do you will see the output input tensor and and the uh, <coughs> output uh, and the output circuit tensor okay how it is look like is let's first examine the first input tensor part okay so for example we can go there we can simply type print and then tfq dot from underscore tensor and this input ten, input circuit tensor part okay so i am running it here i am requesting if you want to reproduce it you can you can do it uh, do it with me okay and if you face any difficulty let me know i am running the code here and you see this type of output you will be able to see so basically this is how this is the input tensor we have given okay so this is the input tensor format we have given as a part of the our earlier programming okay and now we want to examine the output tensor okay in the earlier earlier chunk of code we have we have explored that so we will see what form form it looks like what is the output tensor format okay so what we will do we will simply write print in a similar format tf2 dot from underscore tensor function under that we will simply put the variable name output variable name so that is out underscore circuit underscore tensor so we are simply doing that okay and we will test the output okay so click on the code plus code okay remember plus text for writing the text setup whatever the text you see in my notebook we have written it by by just clicking on the plus text button okay and you just here and then you run the cell and you will be able to see the form of the output circuit tensor so this is how the output circuit tensor looks like okay 
Now, what will you do? Once we have we have uh, tested the input and output tensor for how it looks like. Now we will go toward the problem overview. That what type of the problem we want to solve. Now, like I was I was mentioning that our target here to examine a cluster state, whether that particular cluster state is excited or not. So that will be our main motor. Now I have defined what is cluster state. Cluster state, it is also written in the theoretical part here also. If you go through that, you will be able to understand all the integrity of it. And whatever the necessary research papers has been uh, contributed in this domain significantly, I have mentioned them with the hyperlink, uh, with the proper hyperlink link. So you can click them uh, and you can visualize it. So basically, if you see the cluster state, uh, it is the, it is highly entangled state. Okay. Now, we are basically using a little bit of simpler data set just to give you the prompt outcome. Okay? Because if it is a much more complicated data set, it may take some time. But all remember that all those problems can be solved in, in classical computers. But classical computers take, will take much more time okay, than the quantum setup. Okay? So, for example, here we are basically exploring the deep mirror type of structure. Now, mirror stands for the multi-scale entanglement renormalization and such now what is and such and such is basically an assumed form of an unknown function when a function is unknown to you we basically call it as and such we always take some assume assume function assume form of that unknown function in order to facilitate the solution of an equation or some other problem because once you want to solve that unknown form of the function you have to assume certain form and to in order to solve that particular equation or particular problem so that's the reason it is called as mira multi scale entanglement renormalization and such okay now why you are talking about the qcn and architecture so there are two things we are basically talking about like qcnn okay the cluster state is translationally invariant now you see what is translationally invariant means translationally the translationally invariant means that whenever if you are shifting the input output will remain same so that is called the translationally, uh, translationally invariant. Okay, and as I mentioned, that the cluster state, which is our, which is our concern data set, that is basically a highly entangled. Okay, now what we will see that the architecture, what what our target will be, the architecture should be in a, such an effective way we have to deal with that architecture. It can reduce the effect of the entanglement. Okay, and you can give it the classification by reading out a single quantum bit or qubit. Now the excited cluster state can be defined using this already have been defined using the set dot rx get okay applied to the qubit and we will see the q conv and q pool layer okay like in the classical convolutional neural network you all of you know that we use the convolutional layer pooling layer same thing is there in the quantum convolution as well. Now, this is the prepare the cluster state, okay, highly entangled state. Then we will see the excite or not, okay. Then it is fetched to the Q con when plus Q quantum pool layer. And then you will see with the with, with this, this jet, jet gate will, will give you the idea that whether it is in the uh, normal, no, I mean, in the excited state or not. So if it is excited, output will be plus one. If it is not excited state, then it will be minus one. Okay, so it will flip around the phase between plus one minus one with the pi phase. Okay, that means zero will remain unchanged the, with, the, with the flipping around the pi phase plus one to minus one. Okay, like we have seen the outcome of the jet gate during our discussions. So, <clears throat> this is the basic building block around the uh, for tensor flow. So, this is the your, your circuit construction layer cluster state where you will prepare then the tensor flow tf dot keras dot input layer you see this x cap highlighting you the excited state okay and then q con plus quantum pool layer this is basically pqc layer parameterized quantum circuit layer pqc stands for the parameterized quantum circuit okay this is the parameterized quantum circuit layer the outcome is being fetched to z gate and you see the mean square error you will you will be able to calculate the loss so this is the overall architecture scenario like in classical case in the convolutional layer you always go for some architecture it is the quantum equivalence of that okay 
Now, one way to solve this problem in the with the TensorFlow quantum, what are the steps we have to follow? First of all, the input, the model should be the is a circuit tensor. Okay, it that particular circuit tensor can be empty circuit. Or an X get on a particular qubit indicating the excitation. Okay. And second one is the rest of the model of the quantum components are constructed with the dot layers, dot add circuit layers. Okay. In the third case, for inference, a TFQ layers, the PQC layer is used. Like I was mentioning, the parameterized quantum circuit layer. Now, PQC layer is, a, is a playing a very, very pivotal role to define the architecture consists of the quantum convolutional layer and quantum cooling layer. So PQC layer can convert the quantum circuit to a tensor flow layer. So that particular can be read through the jet cap. Jet cap as I was mentioning that this is measuring the outcome state. Okay, whether it is an excited state or not. If it is the excited state, the outcome will be plus one. If it is the non-excited state, outcome will be minus one. So because we know that the jet gate is a unitary gate so only one qubit and it needs to be it mapping the outcome either plus one to minus one lifts zero and change okay that means it is rotating around the z-axis okay by pi radian that means 180 degree pi radians means 180 degree okay so that is how uh, by flipping the phase of qubit okay now the data so as discussed, the data, how we are generating the data, if you see this data part. To build your model, you have to generate the data. Now you see, we are basically generating the data in a cluster state, that means highly entangled state. Now original paper has used a much more complicated data set, but here we are a little bit of easier part we are doing. So the target will be that if our rotation is large enough, it will be labeled as plus one. Plus one means it is highly excited. If the rotation is not that much large enough, we will label it minus one. That means it is not that much excited. So definition of the generation data, if you see in the qubit, okay, we are basically providing the training and generating the training and testing data. So we are putting the round n round equals to 20. Okay. So that means uh, we, we will first initialize the excitation and, and the levels. Then what we are doing, we are defining for n in range of the n rounds because we want to produce n rounds into n qubit data points okay so under that for bit in n qubit this for loop we are defining rng for the np dot random dot uniform the range is minus np dot pi comma np dot pi okay then excitation how we are doing the excitation appending by using this circ dot circuit function where we are using this circ dot rx function over rng into bit and then we are what we are doing we are putting the level append one if minus np dot pi by two is less than equal to rng less than equal to np dot pi by two else minus one so plus one will happen when the rng is lying between pi minus pi by two to plus pi by two otherwise the output will be minus one so we have to see the whether the rotation is large enough or not if the rotation is large enough the output will be one if the rotation is not large enough that means that is not much in excited state so it will be minus one okay then we are what we are doing we are basically splitting the data set so the length of the data set whatever we are using the 0.7 that means 70 percent we are using for the training purpose rest of the 30 percent for the validation and testing purpose okay so this is how we have defined training train excitation equals to excitation dot split underscore ind then test excitation we have defined in a similar fashion and now train <coughs> i mean split underscore ind is to we have not written anything in the right hand side that means remaining data part okay so initiation of the data part to split ind which is the 0 0.7 0 0.7 that means 70 percent of the data for the training and rest 30 percent split underscore ind to rest of the part rest 30 percent is for the testing purpose and we have leveled the train and test data accordingly like we do for the classical aspect as well we are following the similar thing and then in the return what will be the get we will get in the return return tfq dot convert to tensor okay train expectation okay np dot array train level along with that we will also get the test uh, tfq convert to tensor 
for the test excitations and in pitot array for the test level. We are just simply uh, doing it in the QCN and practice session. Okay, so I will click on plus code section. I will put it there and click on the run cell. So once I am clicking the run cell, if there is no error, it will it will run successfully. Okay, like we can see, there is a green blue tick is there. Uh, sorry, green tick is there. So that means it has run successfully. Okay. Now what we will see, we now want to see like our regular uh, machine learning to create the test and testing, uh, training and testing set to use the benchmark. We can now quickly see the data points that how it is performing. Now we want to check the performances. Okay. So you see, we will, what I will do, I will simply check, okay, how they are performing. Okay. So sample level zero, sample level one, what are the possible outputs we are getting? Remember that I output either will be plus one or minus one. If it is highly rotating plus one, that means an excited state. If it is less, lesser, uh, I mean, rotating in a lesser speed, that means a lesser excited state is minus one. So let me check that what type of output we are getting while testing the benchmark for our provided algorithm. Okay, now see. Okay, here you see both of the case we are getting output is plus one. That means these two these states are in excited states. Okay, so this is how we have validated our initial development. Okay, now what we will do, we will go for the next part. Okay, the defining layers. Now, how we can define the layer? So, like I was mentioning that we are talking about the cluster states. Okay, so in quantum uh, information and quantum computation, we, we know that the cluster states are the highly entangled states. So, cluster states generated using the lattices of qubit. Okay, so in and they will interact with the Ising Ising type interaction. Now, in physics, we talk about Ising model. So, what does it imply by the Ising model? So Ising model basically comprises of the discrete variables, okay, that represent the magnetic dipole moment of atomic spins, okay. So that can can have possibly two states, either plus one or minus one. So here we can see that we are following the same type of things. We are checking that whether the outcome is plus one or minus one. If it is plus one, highly excited. If it is minus one, it is not that much excited. So that is how we are dealing with the predicting the state of the clusters, cluster state, right? which is an highly entanglement state. Now, you see that this, uh, <coughs> we, will, we will see that in the first state of the cluster state, what we will do, we will using the CIRC framework. Now, CIRC framework, CI, CIRQ framework, like I was mentioning, that was developed by Google AI quantum team in, in 2018. Okay, so it, it will give you the benefit, like for example, there are functions like tfq.layers.addcircuit function, where you can in, in, where you can incorporate the model upon it. So if you see, for example, I am defining the cluster underscore state underscore circuit. Okay, bit where you will see the return of the cluster state on qubit on qubits in bits. So first of all, we will define the circuit using the circ dot circuit function. Then we are appending it. Okay, so circ, circuit dot append where circ dot h Adamard gate extension on each bits now we are putting it in the for loop so for this bit comma next bit in gif bits where bits one plus bit zero okay and then we are just simply uh, keeping it in the uh, circuit append function by defining the the next bit and this bit where returning the circuit okay so this is how we have defined that particular function now we have we will we will run it in the google collab okay so if it is uh, if it is okay the code is okay it will show a uh, green tick and it will not there will, will not be any error okay so you see we are running it and it is it has run successfully so there is no error is there now our target will be to see the cluster state how we can display the cluster state so to display the cluster state what i have to do i have to use the svg circuit function Okay, to to the view this to to have the schematic idea of the current state. So you will use the circ grid qubit dot rect function. So if we are using that, you will be able to see the cluster state of the current circuit. 
So this is the cluster state of the current circuit. You see the lattice-like structure has come up. Like I was mentioning that it will follow the Ising model type structure. You see the Ising model type structure you can getting in the output. Okay. So that means uh, it, it, it is a lattice-like structure. We are basically dealing with the lattice-like structure where it is a highly entangled state. Okay. Now, for example, if, if we are... Uh, if, we have, if we have done it successfully, now we are going to the next part, that is the quantum CNL layer. Now, this paper, if you click on this particular link, you will be able to access the paper, Kong Looking uh, Trade Landmark paper, which was published in Nature Physics in 2019. So they have came up with few, few, few prerequisites to execute the quantum convolutional neural network. The first one is obviously one and two qubit parameterized uh, unitary matrices okay and the, then general parameterized two qubit pooling operation okay these two things we will incorporate so first of all our target will be to define one qubit unitary matrix so this is how we have defined with the function of the uh, with the one qubit unitary and under that we have taken two arguments bits uh, comma symbols okay and then what we are doing we are basically uh, defining the using the sixth circuit intact in the rotation in the block sphere xyz and defining the symbols okay so what we have done circ dot x bit okay and we have defined the symbol zero then with the circ y bit we have defined the symbol one and we have circ z bit we have we have defined the symbol we have uh, symbol two so what will be the outcome that depends upon the value of the symbols Okay, so this part of the, after executing this part, what we are doing, we are going to the next part where we are basically defining the two qubit unitary state. So in two qubit unitary state, you see, we have defined the circuit, okay, six circuit that create an arbitrary two qubit unitary state. First one qubit unitary is done. Now we have defined the two qubit unitary. Okay, so <clears throat> after defining the circuit, we have, you know, whenever you are defining any function, in the programming language last of all last, at the last you have to return the circuit so you see we have initialized at a six circuit then one qubit unitary okay then we have gone for defining the for example with this circ zz circ yy and circ xs okay this after after defining those gates okay finally we have defined the symbols appropriately okay bit zero comma symbol nine to twelve bit one qubit unitary bit one symbol 12 to onwards it will go up to 24 okay so <clears throat> now two qubit pooling layer now source qubit sync qubit and symbols now we will define the two qubit pooling layer so in pooling layer we know that we do the down sampling in the classical uh, convolutional neural network so that's the reason we have to define what is the source qubit how we are going from the source qubit to sync qubit and symbol is obviously there so here what we are doing, we are basically making a six circuit to do a parameterized pooling operation, which attempts to reduce the entanglement down from two qubit to just one qubit. It will take the attempt to down the entanglement level. Like in the classical uh, CNN, what we do using the pooling layer, we incorporate the down sampling here. It is also doing the same thing. It is pulling down two, key two uh, <coughs> it is pulling down the entanglement two qubits to just one qubit. So pool circuit, it is initialized as the circ circuit, okay, then sync basis selector, okay, we have defined, then source basis selector, we have defined, okay, then pool circuit happened on the basis of the sync basis selector, we have appended the pool circuit on the basis of the source basis selector, okay, and along with that, we have also defined the pool circuit append with the C0 control knot, okay, where the control is given on the source qubit, and your target is sync qubit. Okay, at the end of the day, you have to do the down sample type of thing like we do in the, uh, in the classical sense. Okay, so in the same thing we are doing in the quantum domain, we are basically down sampling it to, but, but our target is to entanglement level, reducing the entanglement level from two qubit to one. Okay, and then the sync basis selector we are using. Okay, and finally returning the pool circuit. Okay, so once we are doing it, if, if the code is perfect, it will run successfully in our uh, QCNN practice notebook. So what I am doing, I am just copy pasting it here and 
trying to run it. So if it is OK, it will run. You see, it is a run successfully. The uh, green tick mark is given there. Now our target will be to print that one qubit unitary circuit because we have uh, used the we have reduced the the entanglement level by using the quantum pooling layer. It has it has converted two qubit to one qubit. So by using the SVG circuit, okay, running over a one qubit unitary, we will be able to see this type of the structure as an outcome. Okay, so. What will you do? We will just click on this plus port section. So just put it there. And you see this type of output you will get. Okay, this type of circuit output you will get. Okay, so outcome on the basis of the one qubit. Okay, now we want to see the performance of the two qubit unitary circuit. So once you want to see the performance of the two qubit unitary circuit, so how it has been formed out there. So just put the same code here. We have seen the one qubit unitary circuit performances. Now we want to check the two qubit unitary circuit performances. So this is how it will run. Okay. You see this type of outcome you will get. Okay. So lattice like structure. For one we have got for the one qubit outcome. This is for the qubit outcome. So then again. What we will do? We will do the two qubit pooling circuit. Okay, now we are we, are, we want to check the pooling circuit. So simpler way, you just append the code, clicking on plus code, and hit on the answer button. The performance of the pooling layer. Okay, so you can check the each layer or whatever the architecture you are putting to the output will be. Okay. Now we are going towards the quantum, like it has been mentioned, the Kaitri has been mentioned in Kong looking paper. We are incorporating the same thing uh, to define the one dimensional quantum convolution to check the application of the two qubit parameterized unitary to check the performances of the every pair of the adjacent qubits with stride one. Remember, our stride is one. Okay, so in similar fashion, we are defining the <coughs> the quantum con circuit okay where two arguments like we have taken earlier also bits and symbols so the main target is that the quantum convolutional layer will follow the above diagram and return a silk circuit with cascade of the two qubit unitary applied on the all pairs of qubit in bits as present in the diagram above okay so the circuit we are defining six circuit now you are running the for loop over it so in the during the for loop you see for first and second in zip qubit 0 2 bits 1 2 and then you are defining it as the circuit plus equals that means circuit equals to circuit plus 2 qubit unitary first second comma symbol in a similar fashion you are defining the another for loop okay where circuit plus equals to means circuit equals to circuit plus 2 qubit unitary first second and symbol and return the circuit so if the code is okay, it will run without having any error. So that is the thing we are incorporating here. We have copy pasted it and, and check. Okay, so the circuit, the code has run successfully. You can see the uh, green tick there. Okay, and now what will you do? We will check, display the horizontal circuit. Okay, very horizontal circuit, whatever we have print. Now, what you will do, you will run the HVG circuit function to print it. Okay. So once you are running the SVG circuit function over it, so you will get the following type of output. Okay. So this type of output you will get. Okay. So your circuit has run successfully. I'm sorry, the following code has run successfully. Okay. And circuit is doing well. Now we will go for the quantum pooling. Now quantum pooling layer, you know, that pulls the n qubit to n by 2. That means earlier case what we have done. We have converted the 2 qubit to 1 qubit. So here it is also reducing the entanglement level from n qubit to n, n by 2 qubit. Okay. So what we are doing, we are, we are defining it in similar fashion. I am not repeating it because already we have seen the how to define a quantum pooling layer to convert it 2 qubit to 1 qubit. It is a general representation. Okay, 
so we are doing converting the nqv to n by 2 so this is the same type of code is there like we have defined earlier if the code is okay it will run successfully just put it there click on the run cell button okay you see the green tick is there that means it is also running successfully okay now to examine a pulling circuit okay so what is doing what we can do that pulling components are defined to see the performance so now test bits if you take circ grid qubit okay now we are putting one to eight that means zero zero to zero seven it will print upon that okay and you will be able to oh, just a second you will be able to see the pulling component of circuit performances okay so without any further delay we are we are incorporating it for the uh, our practice window and i'm just copy pasting it and we'll, sorry it was not copied correctly just a second If you put it there, if you run the code, you will be able to see the performance of the pulling uh, quantum pulling circuit. Okay. So this is our desired outcome. So now we will go for the model definition. So basically, you see, like I was discussing, that to define a purely construct, purely quantum CNN. If we, if we want to start with 8 qubit and we want to pull down to 1 and then measure the z. Z cap means whether it is giving you the excited state or not. That would be that would be done. So this circuit is a similar circuit like we have been incorporated while converting to 2 qubit to 1 qubit. So I'm not repeating that. Uh, so the logic is same. Okay. Let us check that can we scale down from 8 qubit to 1 qubit by using the one term convolutional and pulling layer. Mainly the pulling layer target will be to scale down the level of entanglement present in the current system. Okay. So we are uh, incorporating same type of code. So that's the reason I am not explaining it again. So just copy paste it. Okay. Here just one thing I want to highlight because we want to check the model architecture layer. Yeah, DPI has been set up up to up at 70. Okay. I am just putting it there. Okay. Now you see. After hitting on the run cell button. This type of architecture you can see. Okay. So input layer is there. Okay. Then what we are doing at circuit. Okay. Then like we have mentioned like the parameterized quantum circuit layer. This is the PQC layer. Okay, so like the way we have defined earlier, that type of architecture, we are printing out input layer, add circuit layer, followed by PQC layer. So that was our discussion. That was the discussion we made during our uh, initi initiation of our talk. So according to the architecture has been defined. So that is perfectly okay. Now, you see that we are going to the next part. to train the model. Now you see that while training the model, I can run the code here also, but I repeat that I can run the code here also, but why I'm not doing so? Because in case any network difficulty may happen, internet difficulty may happen, it will, it will keep on running for the infinite time and you will not be able to see the output. So that's the reason I am taking this particular notebook as backup and I am showing you in the QCM in practice. If you want, you can reproduce it. I hope all of you are trying to reproduce it. If you face any difficulty, you can feel free to ask me. Now, while training the module, you see that what are the uh, things we are basically considering that to generate some training data, we are considering training excitation, training level, test excitation and test level by running it on the cluster state bits. Now, custom accuracy metrics, you see, we are defining custom accuracy in terms of the Y true and Y predicted value, truth level value and predicted level value. Okay, so it is defined on the TF squeeze over y underscore true and y is defined under under the TF dot map function. Okay, and then we are returning it as the TF dot keras dot backend mean. Okay, 
in terms of the y true and y predict by applying tf.keras.backend.equal function. Then we are defining the quant QCNN underscore model to compile it over the optimizer, okay, where by keeping the landing rate 0 0.02, loss tf.losses.mac, okay, mean square error we are measuring, then matrix custom accuracy, and obviously history <coughs> data, whatever we have, we are how we are defining it. QCNN dot model fit x train equals to x equals to train underscore excitation is the original data y equals to train level best size we have kept 16 we are using epochs 25 barbers one remember the argument barbers one i have highlighted there barbers one means whatever the performance is doing each epoch wise during the training it will be able to see if you put barbers zero we will not be able to see the outcome while training here you can see that you will be able to see the outcome here you see epoch wise all the outcomes are given there then the validation data is defined under considering the test excitation and test levels okay so i am just copy pasting it here okay and running it see the output is coming up on epoch wise in first epoch you see the custom accuracy 0 0.6685 okay and and you see let, let us complete the epoch okay it is gradually improving custom accuracy is improving For the training and validation case, both the case, the custom accuracy has improved. Then you see, okay, for the training, it is 0 0.9965. For the validation, it, it is giving you the 0.9792. That means we are getting around nearby 98%, okay? So we, 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 we can see that type of output, uh, high, high accuracy output we can achieve. Now we want to plot it, okay? We want to plot the training and validation outcome, whatever we have experienced there. We want to plot it. So simply there is nothing and other things to mention already. Those who are accustomed with TensorFlow platforms or Pythonic, any other Pythonic platform you know, these are very common process to follow if you want to check the training and validation outcome. So basically, uh, plt.plot you can do by putting the data, data details, okay? For the training and validation purpose, you have to label it, level training, okay? And level validation, then at the title with the plot plt dot title we are putting the title training a quantum CNN to detect the excited cluster states okay then we are putting x level for the epoch and y level for the loss the more the epoch you will process the loss will be reduced like we can see this type of outcome will come up okay so we have used 25 epochs so you see with the epochs the loss is gradually decreasing you see the level of loss is gradually decreasing okay so like you do for the classical aspects, it is, it is a similar step we are incorporating in the pure quantum aspect. Okay, remember that this is the pure convolutional, quantum convolutional work you are experiencing. So once you run the code here, okay, clicking on the run cell button, you will be able to see following type, type of output. Training and validation, training is assigned with the blue, Validation is assigned with the saffron color, and you see with the what the period of time with the more number of the box, the the loss has decreased a lot. Okay, so this is all about the pure uh, quantum convolutional neural network. Now I will just give give you a brief briefing on the hybrid model. Okay, already we have uh, uh, covered the assigned timing of my talk, but uh, I just want to give you some idea of the hybrid model performances as well. I will try to quickly wrap up as soon as possible. So basically, what happens that now, what is the hybrid model? Now we have seen the performance of the quantum convolutional neural network. But what model will be much more effective? If we go for the hybrid model, then what will happen? In generally, what happens that in quantum convolutional, we reduce the entanglement level by using the quantum pooling layer from 8 qubit to 1 qubit. But what about if we have the one or two round of quantum convolution fitting the result into a classical neural network? Then what are the scenario we can observe? 
So hybrid model with a single quantum filter. If we consider for the single quantum filter, so this is this is the architecture with the single quantum filter. So you see the quantum along with the quantum setup, there is a dense classical layer is there. Okay, and then we are measuring the mean square error and everything. Okay, so this is we are doing with the single quantum filter. So with this type of architecture, what we will do? We will define the model. So one local operator will first define. Okay. So after we are defining the multi readout model circuit in a similar fashion like we did earlier, what we'll do, we'll build a, mo build a model intacting the logic, okay, whatever we have discussed in 2.1, that all the classical, along with the classical, uh, uh, sorry, along with the, all the quantum architecture, we'll add one, one, uh, one classical dense layer, okay? So we will define the excitation input dual, then cluster state dual, followed by the quantum model dual. Okay, then D1 dual where we will define the dense layer. Okay, uh, for example, tf.keras.layers dense, dense layer of 8 qubit where the quantum model dual will be there. Then we are getting D2 dual where we are basically scaling it down to one qubit. So tf.keras.layer dense one, D1 dual. And then we are defining the hybrid model equals to, we are putting, okay, tf.keras dot model input excitation input input dual output will be d2 dual okay and we are displaying the model architecture how we are doing it we are simply running this function tf dot keras dot utils dot model where the hybrid model will be your input we are putting shape models too and show layer names as false DP, dpi like earlier case 70 we are keeping it here and we will see the defined architecture as we have discussed in the theory section so let us test the hybrid model architecture with one single quantum filter. So this type of architecture you will achieve. Input layer will be there with add circuit will be there. And PQC is the quant parameterized quantum circuit layer. So in earlier cases with the pure quantum circuit state, uh, quantum CNN state, we are stopping there. But for the hybrid system where we are putting a dense neural network layer, the layer is adding up. So we have put, we have given two dense layers, you see. And this is that, this type of the architecture outcome is coming up, okay? So our architecture is okay as far as the way we have defined it. Now we are, we are doing the training of the data set. So I'm not mentioning it again. It is just instead of the pure QCNN, we are going with the hybrid model, that's it. So Varvas will be one, that size 16, epochs 25, we are putting X equals to train excitation, Y level, like we have defined earlier, validation data equals to test excitation, test level. So learning rate has been kept as 0 0.02. So in a similar fashion, we are just simply running that and we will see that over the period of time, over the epochs, how the loss will be decreased, okay, in terms of the training and validation. So we are running, we are running the code and you will be able to see that how the over the period of time with the number of epochs proceeds the loss will be reduced okay so remember that this is we are dealing with the hybrid model first case we have done with the quantum convolutional neural network now you are doing with a hybrid model where we have attached one uh, attached a dense layer after pqc parameterized quantum uh, circuit layer so you, you will be able to see the per system performance outcome. So once you are doing it, you will be able to see. So the training accuracy is 99.07, sorry, 0 0.9907, that means 99.7%. And the validation accuracy is all about 95.83%. 95.83%. It's quite high. Now let, let us see the plot. Okay. So can we can we visualize it, the performances of the uh, QCNN and hybrid CNN. So let us let us check it. So QCNN versus hybrid CNN performances. So this is as simple as the straightforward coding. So no those who are familiar with the Python framework, no way to re-explain it again. I have already explained the steps. First of all, we will put the label on QCNN by plotting the QCNN part. Then we will plot the CNN part. Then we will put the title quantum versus hybrid CNN performances. Then X level will be defined as epochs and Y level as the validation accuracy. 
So once we do it, so this is this type of output you will be able to see. Okay. So what does it imply actually? This green, this green button, uh, sorry, this blue button, uh, blue mark, sorry. This blue leveling is showing you the QCNN and this saffron leveling is showing you the hybrid CNN. So you can see that uh, through these particular aspects, okay, so we can we can we can uh, conclude that the, the hybrid model can converge faster than the purely quantum version. Okay, now you will go with the hybrid architecture with these last steps. That is the hybrid convolution with multiple quantum filters. So this we have done for the hybrid convolution with the single quantum filter. Now we are going for the multiple quantum filters. So this is the architecture. Okay, we are using now. We are using the multiple number of the quantum filters. Earlier case it was one quantum filter. That's it. So PPR cluster states. Now we are doing. We are measuring the excitation of the states with the X gate. Now this is the PQC layer, parameterized quantum circuit layer where the quantum convolutional layer, pooling layer will be there. We are measuring the outcome with the Z gate and that is being fit forwarded to the uh, one, one of the dense layer. Okay, the classical dense layer and we are measuring the mean square error. But here we are we have the multiple quantum filters. So similar type of the model definition is there. Excitation level input underscore multi. We have defined the cluster state underscore multi after the adding circuit. Then we apply three different filters here. Remember that we are using here three filters. So how we are measuring those performances in terms of the quantum model multi one, quantum model multi two, and quantum model multi three. And then we are concatenating the output and feeding into a small classical neural network. Okay. So this is the dense layer D one, dense layer two, where we are concatenating it. And then we are finally displaying the model architecture with using the function tf.keras.utils.plot underscore model. So in a similar fashion like earlier we have done, we will test the architecture that whether we have proceeded in a right path or not. So I'm clicking on the code section and testing the code here. So basically we'll check that whether we are able to see the architecture or not. So this is the following architecture, like the way we have defined. So this is the input layer along with the add circuit layer. Then PQC layer, you see there are three PQC layer will be there because we are using three quantum filters. Okay. And we are concatenating it. Okay. And passing it to a dense, to a classical dense layers. Okay. And then we will experience the outcome. So this is the way we have defined architecture. So architecture is absolutely okay. Now, after the model definition, we are going for the training of the model. So doing the model definition, we are doing the training of the model in a similar fashion. So multi-con model will compile by comprising of the arguments like or the parameters like optimizer where the learning rate is 0.02, cost calculating the loss in terms of the mean square error. Okay, then matrices where we will the we'll check the custom accuracy and then finally fitting it. Okay, so multi-model, uh, multi-con model dot fit where we are taking x equals to train expectations, excitations, y train models, batch size 16, epoch 25, verbose 1, and validation data, test excitation, test level. So the way we have followed earlier, here we are also doing the same thing. So let us check the hybrid model performances with the multiple filters. So let us check it. So epoch-wise, the outcome is coming out. So our epoch is 25. So according to, we will see what type of outcome we can achieve. So we can see over the epoch, like we have seen earlier cases, the loss is reducing down. And you see finally the 
so in terms of the training accuracy 19.49 percent uh, okay so what we will now do we will just simply check it out the performances in terms of the plot okay so these three plots we will do together now okay qcnn hybrid cnn and hybrid cnn in terms of the multiple quantum filters and we will see the performance together okay so what we are doing we are first of all that we have got the validation accuracy 91.67 percent so we are the validation accuracy three tries all of these three cases one for the qcnn another for the hybrid cnn another one for the your uh, hybrid cnn with respect to multiple quantum filters okay now we are printing quantum cnn versus id hybrid cnn performances and x level as as usual epochs and y level is validation accuracy i am printing it out by running this running cell and this type of outcome you will be able to see so again you see the hybrid model is converging faster than the pure quantum compression okay so that is all about my today's talk okay so i believe this talk has benefited you a lot in terms of exploring in quantum convolutional neural network domain qcnn domain it will give a lot of confidence so all the theoretical details and everything is given there in my original notebook so in case any network difficulty may happen that's the reason i have not uh, you utilized uh, this particular notebook rather i have taken this as references and utilized the outcome here uh, in qcnn practice notebook i have reproduced the result here and you can see this is the standard notebook which i will share with all of you all the theoretical details are given there okay so i believe this session has been helpful to all of you thanks to quantum.ai for inviting me here and it is already 9 30 in indian time i am talking about so i have to join a meeting immediately so very sorry i cannot take any questions from the audiences i would request if you have any query please put your query to harun uh, i will i will definitely revert back to all of you i will email this particular notebook with uh, to harun and he will share all with all the participants okay uh, please share your precious feedback i believe uh, this particular session has been quite helpful to you now over to harun and other organizers thank you so much ke amader sathe thakar jonno ajke amader sathe insight to like a session er jonno asha korchi samne aro ekta kono session apnake er sathe pabo टपिक in in bangladesh and other global aspects okay so wish you all the best all the good luck to the participants and the organizers thank you very much again for inviting me here thanks a lot thank you thank you very much okay the last session ta amra ekhane shesh korchi amra inshallah bhabishyote ar kono session e abar hazir hobo quantum.ai thank you thank you sir